What's up, guys? Ivan Carranza here, and welcome to Coffee with Ivan. Today, I had the honor to talk to the one and only Olivia Thompson. Olivia is a bass player from the UK who plays bass for artists such as Becky Hill and Barney Fletcher, among others. I found out about Olivia through Instagram maybe about a year ago, where I saw a video of her playing and she had a massive groove. She was really holding the pocket, so since then I've been following her and it was great for me to have her here on the show as a guest. In this episode, we talked about her influences on the instrument, also doubling on synth bass and electric bass for a show, how to prepare for a show and a big production, touring, as well as networking, among other things. You can find more about Olivia's work on her website, which is oliviathompsonbasses.com and her Instagram page, which is at livethompsonbass. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in a bit. And I saw that you're playing for a couple of artists and one of them... I mean, I, the two that jumped out to me the most was one was Becky Hill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one was Barney Fletcher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know Becky Hill until I was like listening to stuff on Spotify. And I recognized a couple of songs that I've definitely had heard before. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. She has. Um, yeah, that, that is the case. Like we supported the scripts like before um, COVID happened. We were supporting them. And every show she'd say, like, how many people, like, know me? And there'd be, like, a few hands. And then she'd say, like, how many people recognize my songs? And now they know. And, like, everybody was like, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, great songs. Like, great. I saw a couple of pictures and a couple of videos as well. And you guys were playing, like, very big shows. Like, huge arenas, kind of, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that was for the script tour. Yeah. yeah. How was it... uh, for you to to go into such a situation yeah I mean it was well it was so much fun first off like the yeah just the best um I was because that was my first like tour like that like Mm -hmm. on that scale anyway um so I was like sort of nervous beforehand like oh it's gonna be like terrifying like absolutely (laughs) massive stages I was like um but when it came to it I it like there's sort of too much going on to like be nervous Mm -hmm. like because it's so much fun anyway and it's like what you want to do like it's why you're there and like it's a job and stuff but yeah it wasn't as nerve-wracking as I thought it's more Mm -hmm. just enjoyable and because everybody's so far away as well um in the stage you mean yeah like everybody is like so spread out (laughs) so because everyone's so far away and and you can't really make eye contact with anyone Mm-hmm. so yeah it was good fun and wasn't as nerve-wracking as I expected um, yeah. but yeah a lot of fun and uh, how were the, the preparations for such a big production mm. um well for the band it was so we had like a lot of rehearsals um because she's been going for like a long time so I sort of jumped in later um mm-hmm. so she'd had a band already for like a couple of years um so I just like jumped in on the stuff um so we had two weeks of rehearsing to get like everything together um but then obviously because we're playing it like every night or every other night it like just solidifies like as you go but um yeah it was an intense two weeks um <laughs> of, like learning imagine. everything yeah um yeah but uh while I was listening if, for those of you guys listening and watching who are not familiar with the music I would call that kind of like like electronic <laughs> pop music mm-hmm. uh, right yeah definitely yeah so a lot of synth bass yeah as well was, mostly was ask, how how was your approach to you know taking that electronic production and bringing it to the stage of a real yeah. performance what was what is your approach there um well I'd already so I bought so I have my Moog here so I bought this specifically um yeah. for that gig because it's quite heavily based like on electronic stuff so um we needed something like substantial yeah um But she also had, like, an MD that, like, directs, like, what all the band's doing, like, what everybody's playing. So beforehand, I, like, listened to the tunes, like, learned the parts on electric bass and synth, just because we weren't quite sure yet. Um, So learn all the parts on bass, like, figured out how I might do it with pedals, like, to get, like, a synthy tone. 
um, figured it out on key base and then kind of turned up with everything like rehearsed and was like, I can do it on either, like um, listen to the tunes, um, like patch the sounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, sometimes you need to like get to the rehearsal and then it, it like figures itself out. Um, but yeah, I just prepared all the pieces on like both instruments, yeah, like as cool. well as possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's the best approach, right? You don't want to be in the rehearsal and be like, oh, I don't know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't want that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no. How long have you been playing the synth bass? Um, not too long. So I'd say that this gig right now is probably I've used it the most on this gig. Um, I've had like a few before where there was like one or two tunes and with Barney as well that's like Mm 50-50 so maybe like coming up to like a year and a half maybe a year something like that so not too long but the transition was pretty easy Mm -hmm. um, because it's just like the baseline like um, so the transition was okay um, but it's like it's so like useful now like so many gigs are like 50-50 with both So mm-hmm. if you can do it, yeah, it's really handy. Yeah, I can imagine, definitely. And mm-hmm. uh, do you play anything else? Uh, no, I actually. Um, <laughs> I used to play the flute when I was younger. And that was like my first instrument, which I played from being like six to like 15. Um, so I could maybe like blast out something, <laughs> <laughs> something on the flute, not very well. But no, no, like bass is, yeah, the main thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But did you have to take like a piano lessons for music school or something? Mm-hmm. Um, no? Not really. I mean, okay. I use like the, if I'm like doing like some theory or something, or like working out chords or whatever. Like I know like, I have like knowledge of the keyboard, yeah. um, and I use it throughout uni um, for like theory and stuff. But yeah, no, I've never taken piano lessons. Okay. I sort of like try and yeah. get because it's good to have. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like some sort of knowledge of keys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try and stick to bass. Yeah. mainly that's yeah. like my main thing <laughs> i can i can understand because i had mm-hmm. to learn piano and i'm by no means a, a decent piano player or keys player <laughs> but i had to learn to to get accepted to, to school and also mm-hmm. during school i had two two years of that and i think piano or keys are amazing instruments or are amazing instruments mm-hmm. i just hate practicing that it's like, it does suck. Yeah, like one hour for me is like takes forever, and I can yeah. play seven hours of bass, and I don't even notice it. You know? Yeah, I know. I totally get you. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've been like trying to like learn piano, but like properly. Like, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's so horrible. Yeah, like, I don't know my, my brain just focusing on both hands, you know, the left and the right one, and it's like, yeah, my brain's fried. <laughs> yeah, no, like the bass is like, yeah, that would just feel so natural, but yeah. Not for me. <laughs> and and did, then you start playing bass around 15 when you st- stopped playing the flute or how did you start playing? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I stopped playing the flute. I like, um, do you know how they have like the graded systems in school? So like grade one to eight. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got through the grades um, and then thought I'm not really um, wanting to continue. Like I'd rather do a different instrument like while I'm at school because I had a few years left. And I was in, like, the orchestras on flute and stuff. Um, So I thought, like, I've got a bit of, like, spare time now, so um, I'll try something else. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I was going to go for guitar because my dad's, like, really into, like, rock music and stuff. Like, really, really into it. Yeah. Um, Like, collects records. Um, So it was always, like, around. So I was like, it'd be cool to try and, like, connect with some of that. Yeah. Um, so went for guitar and um, went to the music shop to look at guitars um, and then my mum like saw a bass and was like oh maybe that'd be cool like you could try that <laughs> um, so yeah I was like sure like <laughs> we'll try so yeah. bought that um, not I didn't go in with the intention like I didn't have any like idols on guitar or anything it was more just something to do like while yeah. I was at school um, but yeah so I ended up coming out with a bass and then yeah started learning got really involved like really into it and yeah and then it just escalated <laughs> from <Yeah>. that point <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> so did, were you taking lessons from the very beginning or were you self-taught yeah something? yeah so I was taking lessons in school like yeah like as soon as I bought it really because they had like um jazz bands and stuff in school mm-hmm. yeah um 
so they got me like into that quite quick because they needed a well they needed a double bass but bass guitar like yeah. fine so they got me straight in <laughs> so yeah. it was like yeah straight in with it but yeah I had a teacher um yeah for the whole of school um yeah, yeah. but I did a lot of practice like even when I just started because I loved it so yeah. much yeah you know what you mean so. me too I, I started at around maybe 14 15 as well mm -hmm. uh, after my my cousin went I went to a show of my cousin. He played guitar, and I that's when I heard a, a bass and felt mm -hmm. you know the low end of a bass for the yeah. first time. And I was like, I want to play that. <laughs> and yeah, it's I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bought a bass the next day, I think, or the next week, <laughs> and I, it was just locked up in my room, just practicing. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's once you get into it, like, because some people obviously like start on instruments and don't really feel that instrument. Yeah, but like once you find the one that's like perfect for you, it's like yeah, there's nothing stopping you. It's yeah. like yeah, <laughs> it's just it, it is fun. I mean, mm. like I said, I can like practice. You probably noticed too. Like you, you can practice hours and hours and hours, and it's just yeah. like like oh, <laughs> I haven't eaten. I have to eat. <laughs> yeah, it gets really addictive. Like yeah, yeah it really does. <laughs> and just me being curious, um, what is or what are some of the things or most important things that you learned during this uh, period that you were studying music? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, really difficult question. Hmm. I would say, like, I mean, the main ones I would say, like, is um, obviously practice, like, as much as possible, like, cause it's your instrument, like, you want to be, like, as best as you can, like, if possible like on top of your game so definitely that and it makes you feel more relaxed like if you've practiced like you yeah. will feel better um and I would also say like networking like on social media especially like just going to like everything you can like going to whatever gigs are happening where you are um putting yourself out on social media is definitely important especially nowadays and with the covid thing <laughs> it's definitely um yeah important maybe not crucial but it's a really good like help yeah um yeah i'd say those two things are probably like the biggest lessons i would say i mean i was giggling a lot through uni mm -hmm. um so found it really useful to network like even just like reaching out to people through like email or like local like function bands and stuff like that um because like the more you network like the more you like get in so yeah, yeah I would say network and practice yeah, yeah. <laughs> those two things yeah that's one thing that um I think people I mean from a, from bass players that I've talked to who are like you know working like big gigs and stuff that's one thing that the elf mentioned like you know you get a network you gotta connect with people and yeah. yeah like you mentioned social media nowadays is also important as a part of mm -hmm. what we do and you know just playing your instrument very well is not gonna you know make the cut at the end of the day you gotta yeah. do a bit more definitely yeah it's it's weird it's a weird thing because it could be like some of it is down to luck as well um and I think actually going to study, so obviously, like, you know, because you moved, like, to a different country to study, but, like, even moving to, like, a bigger city to study, I think, really helps because you have, like, that network around you. Um, yeah, I think some of it is definitely luck. Mm -hmm. But I think the more you, like, put yourself out there, like, the luckier you'll get, really. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it is difficult, but, yeah. I think if yeah. people see you, you know, working and doing stuff, that you get better chance at the end of the day. Yeah, and totally. That's how, that's how I like thought about you, and I was like, one day on Instagram, I saw you like, ripping on bass, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like that's that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just so weird because like when you put it out, like you just don't know who's gonna see it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah it's good to put yourself out there, and it it's like a confidence boost for you, and then you can see like how much you've progressed over time as well. You can look back and, you know, like realize how much you've progressed. And it's great to connect as well. Like it's a great, like Instagram especially, is like a great community for everyone to connect and like, you know, people from everywhere. So yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Do you sometimes uh, feel or, or felt at the beginning, for example, that you didn't want to post, post something out of uh, fear of criticism? Yeah, to yeah. I mean... So when I first came to uni, I was sort of just like gigging around my hometown. So it was quite small. Um, I think there were like 
so there was me that played bass and then there was maybe like two other 60 year old men okay <laughs> so it was three of us um so it was very small like uh, what I know of anyway is like for that circuit there was maybe two other guys yeah um so because it was so small it was like you were being asked for everything like always busy um yeah and I think moving to a bigger city it's like more connection like there's so much more going on there um and you become sort of like a smaller fish really mm-hmm. in like a bigger city um so it can be nerve-wracking especially when you realize you're like oh no like <laughs> there's so many like amazing amazing players um I think for the most part everybody has like good intentions for everybody and like everybody wants to see people like trying hard and yeah. you know and especially when you're young like you're not going to be like you're going to make mistakes and you're not going to be like the best ever yeah. um but yeah I was sort of nervous to put stuff out but I was also very like I just started uni was very young so I just wanted to like get out there more mm-hmm. so I didn't really feel that much fear because I was like I just want to like be out there I was more mm-hmm. excited <laughs> yeah yeah that's great because I know like some people, um, I don't know, sometimes for my friends, close, close friends, they send me messages and they ask, hey, do you think this is good enough for Instagram? And yeah. I, uh, who judges what, what what is good enough, you know? I yeah, mean, no, I have to say, like, I do, I have to admit, I do send everything to friends before. Like everything, I'm like, how does this sound? Like, is yeah. the mix okay? Like, yeah, yeah. no, I, I do. I think it's it's nice to have it like reassured before you send it out in case you've like missed something yeah um which isn't a big deal but <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean g- getting feedback or reference like you said like to check a mix or something definitely always good but yeah I th- <laughs> but i think like i don't know so people like yeah I- people are gonna are gonna comment on this and that i mean who cares at the end of the day you know well it, that's it, the it, thing like you can't like please everybody like yeah. and i remember this one guy i'd, I'd posted like it was so silly like now I think but I posted like this one video and someone put like I can't hear you like the mix is wrong like this is a mime like you aren't playing this like I think it was a Billy Sheehan tune or something yeah. and he was like this mix is so low and I think you've mimed it um because I can't hear and really went in and I was like oh I was really upset so like deleted the video yeah um but it's one of those things that you're always gonna have you know it doesn't matter. Like it's yeah. just Instagram at the end of the day. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's one of those things that you're have, always gonna have. <laughs> I have one video on my YouTube channel that I did. I don't know. I think it was six years ago. I'm not sure. Uh, I recorded 25 reggae bass lines, and back then oh, cool. I didn't have you know uh, mixing monitors or anything. Uh, mm. I had like cheap laptop speakers, so I mixed the bass with that. And if you listen to it just with your laptop, you don't hear the bass, right? Yeah. But if you put a sub, it's like massive. <laughs> that video, I mean, the, the, the difference in comments from people is like, you suck, I don't hear the bass. Or the, the bass is too loud, or the bass is too quiet. It's like, <laughs> people don't even read the comparison before writing yeah. something, right? Definitely. That is definitely a struggle with the bass, like the other instruments might not understand but yeah yeah no it's a struggle <laughs> yeah you have to check like because the laptop speakers are like really really crap for bass so it's like yeah. it'll sound amazing through speakers you're like yes like this sounds sick yeah. but yeah it is a struggle for bass yeah for on, sure. on the phone to sound to get a, a good bass sound on instagram is a, you could just plug in and, and that's it you have to <laughs> tweak a little a little stuff here and there maybe put a high cut or a low cut sorry uh, because otherwise it's just like yeah <laughs> yeah it's there's a there's actually um do you know the real free yeah do you follow him yeah, yeah. i don't know how he, he it, was, like, it's crazy it's yeah, like even through your phone speakers it sounds the same i'm like how <laughs> yeah it's it's wow it's, it's impressive yeah it's very yeah it's insane like through any speaker it sounds like the same yeah <laughs> like how. And not, not only the sound i mean his playing is also pretty amazing yeah oh my god it's off the scale like yeah wild yeah. <laughs> incredible how, how did you uh, get those gigs for example with becky hill or with uh, barney fletcher how, how what did you audition or did you were yeah. referred so hmm well i mean should i start i guess well in first year of uni i was doing like a lot of function stuff 
Mm -hmm. Um, So I went to uni, like, having played the bass for, like, a few years, um, and I'd been gigging already at that point in, like, a local function band, um, like, every week. Um, So wasn't entirely sure what I wanted yet, but Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm definitely going to go to music college for sure, Um, but I don't know where I'm going to be, like, afterwards. So I sort of just went with the idea, like, I'll go... um, like see what happens like try as hard as I can um and then if it gets to the end and there's nothing like I've still got a degree and I've still like you know like learn more about my instrument like even if at this point I was like even if that wasn't going to be my career like this is what I want to do right now and like it's still a degree so when completely like open-minded like not knowing um what was going to happen And then maybe after the first year, I started seeing like these session guys um, and was like, I think this is what I'm wanting to do. I think like this is what is like exciting me the most. So then once I knew that, started um, sort of seeing like what they were doing, like trying to get into that like mindset of how they were doing what they are. So that's when I started putting stuff out on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, just to try and, you know, like spread um, my name basically to see if anything would come from it. Um, so a lot of gigs did come from there. So um, I was awesome. putting stuff out on, yeah, yeah, of Instagram, which is insane, but I was putting stuff out on Instagram. Um, and I got, so the Little Mix gig was a death actually. Um, it was like a death gig, which was insanely lucky. Um, it was in like the summer break of, uh my second year at college so like halfway through mm-hmm. um and I got a dm on instagram um it was from she, like one of my biggest idols like she's awesome she plays she's a musician and she plays bass for daniel caesar mm-hmm. Doesn't really um know. she's called Sia gray okay yeah um, yeah. yeah yeah i know like yeah she was such a, like an inspiration. Like I was like looking up to her so much. Um, so she really kindly debt me out the gig. Yeah. Um, so obviously accepted very yeah. happily. <laughs> um, so went down and did that gig. And that was honestly like the best first gig. Like everybody was so kind and they've all like been doing this for a few years. So it was so great to work with people that are in it. Like the advice I got was amazing. And then from that point, that sort of led on to, so that led on to Becky like a year later. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I was sort of like networking more, which led on to Barney. Um, So yeah, it's all just come through pretty much networking and Instagramming. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Yeah. (laughs) That's great. And are you involved in any sort of way in the the writing process of that or just just sideman and bass playing? Yeah, so for all those things, it was literally just, like, get the tunes, like, learn them in, like, every way, shape or form that is possible, and then get there and then play, like, what they ask, basically, which is what I, like, enjoy. Like, I'm not super into the writing side, Mm -hmm. um, which is, I don't really know any musicians that aren't, like, interested in writing that I can think of. Um, So it is kind of weird to be a musician, but not interested in writing at all. Mm-hmm. um I mean I'll obviously like compose bass lines and stuff like fills like all the time like all day um but yeah no for me it's just the, like the playing which yeah. is my thing which is what I enjoy so yeah <laughs> I can imagine the playing some of the lines uh, of Barney Fletcher is pretty cool but I was listening to a couple of records there's some pretty <laughs> dope bass lines in there yeah well the MD who is amazing he sent me um like the first track to listen to um to ask if I was interested um it's a tune called Christ Flow and it has this like yeah. bass line that's so fun I was like yes <laughs> yeah I couldn't wait I heard that I was like yes I'm so happy yeah did you play it with fun. electric or the synth yeah so that one is like 50 yeah. 50 um so it's like a minimal um setup with pedals and stuff it's um so it's 50 percent synth and then I have like an octave pedal like an OC2 yeah. um so yeah, very minimal, but yeah, 50-50 between. Mm-hmm. And for example, with, with Barney, I mean, you, you mentioned 50-50, 50 cent, 50 bass. What is yeah, your typical setup? What do you take to the gig with you? Mm-hmm. Um, for Barney? 
Yeah. Or just, yeah. Um, so I take, I don't take this actually um, because the base parts are triggered like through Ableton. Okay. Um, so I have a base station, which sounds great, but it's just really useful as like a MIDI controller because it's like this big. Yeah. Um, so I take that with me. Um, and then I have like a um, pedal train nano, like yeah. just the super small one. Um, so it just has like a DI, um, a tuner, an OC2, an OC3. I think that's it. Yeah, just and a compressor as well. Yeah. Um, that's it. So that gig is like so minimal with the setup, like really not much going on. Um, so yeah, that one's a, yeah. And why do both octave pedals? Well, I bought the OC3 first. Uh -huh. Um, so I used that, but was really like looking for an OCT. I just couldn't find one for a while. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but managed. I was looking for the one with the silver. Um, do you know one of the OG like cool ones? Yeah. But, and, but I've got one of, with the black little thing, which is fine. Um, so yeah, bought that second, but love that so much. Like I think that one is a lot more useful. Like I much prefer the sound. But the OC3 sometimes, because it has that like overdrive setting, mm -hmm. which is sometimes like useful. So I like to just have both yeah. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so it, you have them set different uh, in different ways so that you can trigger different types of sounds or is it just the same and have one as backup or something? Yeah, well, honestly, it depends. Like sometimes it's the backup, but sometimes like I'll use like the overdrive setting on the OC3 um, and then have like one of the octaves or both up yeah it all depends like on the gig really but i mainly mm. use the oc2 i would say yeah. it's a lot yeah. more useful yeah that sounds great <laughs> i i got one um for fairly cheap about 50 euro i saw it on ebay and i snagged it up like oh a my second. god <laughs> yeah i had to travel by train i went to the train station <laughs> give him the guy the money and then run away back to the train <laughs> Yeah, that's a great deal. They're really, yeah, I think people like, they obviously know that they're like not in production anymore. So yeah. people are like ramping it, ramping yeah. the price. Yeah, there's some really expensive ones. Are you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think Jenny Quistala has, I don't know how many of those, like he collects yeah. them. <laughs> I'm very envious of, um, yeah, his setup. It's, yeah, he's got everything, three yeah. of everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. His pedal library is so impressive. <laughs> Um, and what about uh, the setup with Becky? Is it the same or do you take something else? Yeah, so um, it's pretty much the same. I have um, the Aguilar Agro as well, like an mm -hmm. overdrive, um, which I use. But that's mainly on synth bass mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, but yeah, that's also like pretty simple. Pre all of the gigs I do are like pretty simple pedal wise. Mm -hmm. Like it's usually like I'll have like an envelope filter like with me just in case um and some other stuff but for the most part it's just like overdrive maybe a fuzz as well yeah. and then just like octaves like i find so useful yeah definitely. um yeah yeah that's one thing uh, that i also i mean i also have i have a Peltry metro it's a bit bigger than the nano yeah and i mean the two things that i use the most is my tuner my compressor and my di That's it. Yeah. I can get yeah. through an entire gig with that. Maybe some overdrive, depending if I want to leave one on all the time with very mild distortion and then have maybe another one to really distort the bass. But like for a lot of production or gigs, you don't need like like a like a flagship pedal board, you know. It's yeah, like, totally. No, it I, it does. Yeah, it's always best to keep it like as condensed as possible for sure. Yeah. Like even if there's one in there that you're not using, I just take it out. Like yeah. if I'm not using it, like I just get rid of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easier as well if something goes wrong. Exactly. Like on the off chance that something may go wrong, it's easier to if you've got like what you need there. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's like you no, know, it's one more cable, one more power supply that can cause issues. It's definitely. Just, I remember yeah. I played a gig. Um, that was my my senior recital when I was doing my bachelor's, mm -hmm. and we were on a really small stage, and we were like 10 people there, and mm -hmm. the sax player stepped on the cable of the the uh, power supply of my pedal board and disconnected it. Oh. And I, I, <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know. 
mid show what was happening so i was like what's oh, going on so i just took the cable you know plugged it into my amp and then just kept yeah. playing so that's the thing like and you need to know like how to deal with it as well which is like you have to like think fast but yeah. now I had like a similar thing so it wasn't a big deal because it was just a rehearsal but this made me realize like I do not need like everything <laughs> I have here yeah. so I had like this massive pet like a massive board it was insane it was like everything that I may possibly need yeah um and I was using like a pedal. This was like the first year of, of college. I was like, I need a massive board. Like yeah. I have to. More pedals, you know. you know, more skills. <laughs> we all know that. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I had this like massive board. Um, I knocked um, the looper pedal. Yeah. Because I was like experimenting with looping, which is great, but yeah. it's best not to have a looper like on the board if you don't need it. So I knocked the looper, finished like the tune and then could hear like this noise and everyone was like what is like what's going on what is this noise and then looked and was like oh I've looped like a few <laughs> notes and it's just playing yeah <laughs> but you, you know it happens yeah. but yeah it's best to yeah keep it condensed <laughs> yeah but you don't you don't want that happening during a gig you know the last note of a, of a tune and then it keeps ringing or something yeah. like what, what's happening here <laughs> I was just here? like what is this <laughs> but I thought it was the keys player yeah. um like messing about I was like <laughs> yeah, yeah it happens though especially when you're like just starting out or like in college you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did at uh, once a show and we, we played uh, this song by um how is this singer called um she's very hip at the moment a bad guy what's the name of her oh Billie Eilish Billie Eilish yeah we played uh, <laughs> I think we, we played bad guy actually yeah and at the end this comes this this part it's kind of kind of a strange part by the end of the song, and the keys player sampled that, so he could mm -hmm. just fire that section with a with a button of yeah. his keyboard, and I don't know what happened that <laughs> the sample kept looping and it kept looping, kept looping. So we we he pressed it and we had to walk off stage during that part, and <laughs> the sample kept looping forever, <laughs> and the sound guy didn't know what to do with it, <laughs> and he was like, "What's <laughs> going on?" <laughs> they maybe thought it was just for effect, you know, yeah. like for the ending <laughs> yeah it was uh, it was strange <laughs> <laughs> yeah what, what what are your plans right now for example how do you finish um what is considering the situation right now yeah yeah um yeah it's very weird um well this sort of all kicked off um so i was on tour with becky when it kicked off um and like just about to finish my degree Mm -hmm. um, so the plan was to finish that tour do another tour and carry on touring um for the rest of my life pretty much <laughs> was the plan <laughs> which was going fine it was going great until this happened um yeah. <laughs> but yeah I think in a way it's it's interesting that it has because it, it does really show you like how maybe it is a good idea to have a few things happening like mm -hmm. more of a like a portfolio kind of career situation um so yeah it's definitely made me look into like other areas um so like teaching like hopefully like kind of trying to set that up at the minute um and then just looking at like all the other possible options really so like trying like a bit of composing um just all sorts really um but yeah I'm very determined to keep it music and not yeah. have to you know but it's difficult. Like I'm very lucky because I've managed to be able to come home for the COVID thing. Because um, I was coming home anyway, getting ready to go to London. Luckily, I didn't buy or rent a flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very difficult. But yeah, I'm just honestly trying to practice as much as possible and do like as much music as possible. Yeah, through it. But it's difficult. What yeah, about you? What 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 is your what have you been up to? Um, well, I teach at the moment, like two mm -hmm. days a week. After in two weeks, I got another job, so I'm going to be teaching three days a week. Um, yeah. And that has kept me afloat through this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm sure. All the mm -hmm. shows have been cancelled. I played one show uh, I think last week or two weeks mm -hmm. ago in Berlin. How was it? It was fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> but, you know, th that's when I noticed how much I actually missed playing. Yeah, you know, I have no problem staying in my room and practicing all day and playing and recording yeah. and doing video and stuff. Mm -hmm. But 
it's a whole different thing just going out there and playing in front of people and interacting with your bandmates, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it really is. Like, it is fun practicing, like, yeah, as you say, like, in your room. But, yeah, I guess it's why you do it is to go out and play shows. So, yes, it's difficult for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to ask something. I forgot it. Uh, I was going to say, slip my mind. Um <laughs> No idea. It's blanked out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. But, um, oh, yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, so I've been teaching and that has kept me kind of afloat. Mm -hmm. But also, like, I know a, a couple of friends of mine who just did only play and they've been hit really hard this year. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I read the news sometimes, but I don't know how the situation from your point of view in the UK but yeah, no, here, like, all the shows are off for now. Um, I did have one gig, though, a few weeks ago. Um, you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, so that was amazing. So I'm not sure if if this is just something they've done here or whether they have it over in Germany as well or anywhere else. But um, So it was, like, an outdoor festival, like, stage, and then they had, like, sectioned off, like, areas. Yeah. Um, so like little squares, um, mm -hmm. so like six people, I think, max, could like stand in them, um, yeah. which was great. Like that was such a good idea. Um, and it was just a great way to like have a gig on again. Um, and I had family and friends there and they said that they felt like safe there. Like it ran smoothly. Like we didn't obviously see how people were like coming in and out, but they said it ran smooth. Yeah. Um, but then um, the case has got bad again. So then that got pulled a few days after we did our gig. Okay. Um, so I was very fortunate that we got ours done. But yeah, it's also up in the air. But if if they could get that going again, that would be like, I think, a massive help to like the industry. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if they've adopted that in other countries. But yeah, it was great. Like really good. Yeah. yeah. They, they have done that here as well. Uh, kind of mm -hmm. like open air shows and also like you mentioned like squares or blocked yeah. off sections where people uh, I think maximum of four or six like you said could yeah. be in there and also like picnic concerts um, yeah and as far as I know they all went pretty good they also had drive-in yeah. shows yeah yeah that's interesting because a friend of mine played one of those and he he's a drummer and he mentioned it was like complete surreal experience because you know, when you're at a live show, at a big show, and you, you know, step on the kick, you yeah. feel that, you know, pushing you. Yeah. But because it's a drive-in show, all the sound is going directly to the cars. There's oh, no, okay. There's no That's PA going. So you step on the kick, and it's like, <laughs> there's no, no push. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was wondering how they did that. So, so they don't have, like, a PA out front? No. They have Weird. a car, like a like a bus or a minivan, where the mixing engineer is, and they, he's mixing everything, and it goes through radio signals through ah. out to the cars. Oh, that's such a shame for him. <laughs> I was thinking that they had like a big PA, and everyone had to like wind their windows down. No, no, it's that's like all closed windows, <laughs> and sometimes you can even honk because imagine like I don't know a thousand cars honking at the same time. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's a sh you should have. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them, but um, it's like a platform. Hmm. Oh, Something yeah. Po d d Porter? Um, Gregory and Porter. Is that it? Greg Porter? Greg Porter. I think that the, might be. <laughs> do you mean the, the, the floor that vibrates? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think something in Porter, I think. But yeah. yeah, it's like a platform and you yeah. can like stand on it in it. Like, yeah. That would maybe be a good idea for those yeah. shows. So you feel like some of like the kickback. <laughs> yeah. Have you used one of those? I've not. I have my eye on one though. Like, I love that idea. Like, it's so good. My well, I played in a function band, and one of the drummers had one, so I had a little go on his drums. Um, and yeah, it was so cool. Yeah. So cool. I've tested yeah. two devices. Um, actually, uh, you know the brand Eich Amps. No. Uh, they're making in Germany. I'm going to send you the link. Um, and they have one of those boards. They have different mm. sizes. And even the owner of the company, I think he's just struck some deals with clubs. So the club has also a floor that vibrates. Right. Yeah. Um, but I've tested one of those on stage. I, I subbed in for a bass player. And mm -hmm. I could use his rig. And he had one of those boards. 
and the, beneath the stage there were already subs yeah and if i stood on top of that board there was too much vibration for my taste it was, it was like <laughs> yeah, like yeah. A, you know there's too many frequencies like accumulating on top of each other yeah but there's also uh, a company called sub pack it's kind of like a vest that, yeah yeah, you know, yeah i've tested one of those it's amazing oh um, that sounds sick actually yeah. That sounds really cool. They made two versions. One for a chair, so you can just sit on your studio and mix and feel the low end. Oh, nice. Yeah, and yeah. And then the, 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 you know, the vest to play on stage so you can feel the bass. Yeah, yeah it's such a good idea. It's really yeah. cool. And then there's the back beat. Uh, have you heard of that? No. It's uh, kind of like maybe as big as, as this DI here. Yeah. Um, and you, you put it on the strap so it attaches there. Mm -hmm. And and it it's got a, a uh, an auxiliary in for your headphones, for your in ears, and then you can also plug your bass so it vibrates as well. And it's a bit more portable than the, than yeah. the bass, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great idea, especially for like those little shows where there's you're not getting anything. Yeah, yeah. it's a good idea. Because, um, for example, I I really hate when when I'm playing only with my DI. And I don't have an amp, so I don't mm -hmm. feel the bass. Yeah. And you'll have a wedge, for example, and it's a, your bass sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, at best. Yeah, yeah, at best it sounds like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I honestly, most of my gigs are, are like DI. Like, I rarely have an amp with me, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of times the, um, the mixing, like, engineer will put, like, a sub next to me, like, yeah. on like the platform which is nice so yeah. <laughs> when yeah, that we do helps. that that's yeah that's great that helps a lot definitely <laughs> so do you have i mean i can imagine most of them have a like a click and you use in your monitors yeah yeah so all of the yeah all of them are in ears because they're running um like a lot of it through ableton mm -hmm. and there's a lot of tracks so yeah it's always on in ears always mm -hmm. i'd rather it not be i don't really like in ears that much um, like I prefer like having an amp. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot. Most of them are on in ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I, mean, I prefer to have an amp too. Yeah. But what I've noticed, I mean, you can have a very quiet stage mix in your ears with in ears, and it just keeps you, you know, you your hearing safe at least. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so bad with that. Like I always like am tempted to take one out, and sometimes I will like just take one out so the clicks in here, but then I can hear. Which I know you're not supposed to do, but it, sometimes it just sounds better to me. But I think it like damages your hearing more because then this ear is like compensating. I think so. Because yeah. this one's yeah something. But yeah, I do that all the time. I probably shouldn't. But <laughs> <laughs> do you have a molded ones or just uh, for example, I have this Shure. They're like cheap. Uh, I don't know hundred yeah. euro. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, no, I, I do have the shore ones as well. Um, mm. I did have some molded ones that, like, fit over the shore ones. Okay. Um, but, yeah, the well, the company's actually gone out of business now, oh. um, but it didn't fit <laughs> in my ear. So <laughs> maybe <I> got, that's why. <laughs> yeah, I think that may be why they've gone out of business. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it, it wouldn't fit. So I did have molded ones, but it was just, like, the sound was escaping, so I was okay. getting, like, nothing yeah. Um, so yeah, I do need to get a pair done though. Like I think once this is done, I'll definitely. I think that's maybe why I don't like them because I've not had ones that are properly yeah. fitting. Um, but yeah, definitely something I need to get. Yeah, sure. me too. I, I want to get a couple ones, but they're expensive. They're like yeah. some good ones. They they cost a bit of money. It definitely. Yeah, there's a a company where I think they start at like five grand or something. Like they're like the starter ones. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I, there's there's a company here called Fisher Amps. Mm -hmm. I think they work together with Ultimate Ears from the yeah. US, and they're pretty good, but they're still expensive. I don't. Know, you pay at least one k. Yeah. You know, for a like pair starting. of headphones, it's uh, rather a bit too yeah. much. <laughs> Definitely. And you you mentioned before we got on the call, we had actually scheduled for Monday, and you had a rehearsal coming right yes yeah. yeah so that was such a shame because <laughs> it was we've done this so many times so like it was a planned rehearsal for a gig so we rehearsed and then the gig got pulled which has happened like a few times mm -hmm. 
so yeah it's one of those things with covid like you just never know like i've had a few gigs pulled like the day before so like we're ready to go and then yeah it just gets cancelled for whatever reason um but yeah things have started to sort of pick up pace again over Mm -hmm. here so yeah a lot of things have just been like cut yeah so (laughs) yeah very annoying (laughs) so the rehearsal on monday got cancelled as well no, the rehearsal went ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, the gig didn't. <laughs> okay, okay, see. So yeah, we rehearsed yeah. for two days. and yeah. yeah, but it's good to, like, even just getting in a room to rehearse is yeah, definitely. fine with me. Like, yeah, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> just to get together with people and play music, right? Totally, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting when everything, like, returns back. Hopefully, mm-hmm. that'll be soon. And uh, yeah. who was the rehearsal with? So it was with like a local, so I'm back home now. So it was with like a local guy, like a local singer songwriter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was just a pub gig, but then mm. they were like, we can't have, so you can only have like so many people like in a room and like sat around like a table and stuff yeah. and yeah, just got pulled, which yeah. is sad, but it's what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we all have such a situation happen, like, mm-hmm. Uh, the gig I played in Berlin actually um, like two weeks ago came also like a last minute thing because there was another band who was supposed to play mm-hmm. but th- I think the singer or something uh, tested positive for COVID so he yeah. couldn't make it and the promoter the event organizer uh, he had our number and he was like mm-hmm. hey if you have time <laughs> can you guys make it like super spontaneously yeah and like yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> But just like that also happened to a couple of friends of mine, they were supposed to play and it got cancelled the day before or something. Yeah, it's awful. Like, you just literally don't know now until you're, like, on the stage, like, a minute before. It's like, you're like, okay, this is definitely going ahead. <laughs> like, yeah. we're on stage. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they've introduced this, like, three-tier thing now. So um, it's, like, there's three tiers. So, like, the first tier is, like, pubs are still open and, like, people can go in, but you have to be, like, spread apart. And then one's like the pubs close and then there's another, it's very confusing. Um, and I think most people are confused by it. Um, but yeah, and then just one day it went up into the second tier. So then that's it for like pubs and stuff like that. So it's definitely affecting this industry like very hard for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what about your family? Are they doing okay? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're all fine. Um, So no one in my family is like a musician or in anything like this. Um, So my mum's a lawyer um, and my dad works. He's like a, he builds um, like vents and stuff for like buildings. Um, So they're both, yeah, they've both been working more um, than before COVID because everybody's been like, some people are working from home. So yeah, my whole family have been working. That's Um, good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is, yeah, it is brilliant. Um, yeah, it's just me in the family that's, yeah, ran into some issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my, for me, it's the same. My, my, my parents don't have anything to do with music, so I'm the only right. one here. And I'm also, like, you know, a, a cold continent away, so yeah. <laughs> uh, for my for my mom, it's like sometimes, you know, she, she worries. <laughs> yeah, what does she do? Um, she, she, she's a dog trainer, actually. Oh, yeah. Wow. And does also cool. used to do ter- therapy for kids with our dogs and you know. That's so lovely. Yeah. Wow. Ch- children with autism and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Um, what a course, lovely job. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right now of course there's not much going on because you can go on the streets and stuff, but Yeah, yeah. My dad has been working more, like a lot more, yeah. for example. Mm-hmm. He works in uh, IT security stuff for companies, right. software, and he has uh, co- international calls and whatnot. Yeah. So he has to wake up at seven and, you know, have a conference call with other countries and yeah, a lot yeah. of work. I mean, if you can do it remotely, like which most businesses can, like most industries, it's yeah, sort of okay. It's just, yeah, the musicians and like roadies and yeah, and like nightclub hosts, I feel awful for them. Like, yeah, we just don't know. Yeah. Have you been um, recording music for other people or bassline? stuff 
Yeah, not too much, actually. It's honestly, recording is something I'd really um, love to get into. But yeah, I've, I've not really done much recording. I have like a recording setup. So I've got an Apollo Twin and the DI that you just held up. The new have, one? Yeah, which okay. is great. Um, yeah. So yeah, I record stuff for Instagram like all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I would love to get into recording. Do you do yeah. recording a lot? Well, I record a lot for my channel. And for, and yeah, yeah. Sometimes a couple of friends or other people ask me to record bass for them. And yeah. I do that. Um, I would definitely would like to do it more because I also have upgraded my setup quite uh, quite a bit. I also have an Apollo. That's what I'm using yeah. right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. I love that interface. Uh, I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I I had a, a, another one. I'm not going to mention the brand, um, <laughs> which worked fine <laughs> for several years. Yeah, uh, but I bought it because I I, I felt, yeah, I don't want to pay extra two hundred or three hundred for the Apollo. I, I'm I bet it's not that good. Yeah. The, the minute I bought the Apollo, I was like, how did it? What, what did it take me so long? <laughs> <laughs> I think I probably know which one you bought because I also bought probably the same one with the same idea in mind. Um, Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Apollo is great. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, as I bought, um, I mean, I, the Neve DI works amazingly well to track, and it has a ton of headroom. I mean, you can't yeah. clip that thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, honestly, I'm so glad I bought it. Yeah, it's great. It's not, it's not that expensive either. I mean, it's payable compared to other Yeah, no for, what, no, for what it is, no, it's really not. But then I guess with recording and stuff, you don't, like, you're going to buy stuff that's maybe a mistake because it's sort of difficult to know what to get initially. Like, mm -hmm. especially, like, when you're, like, just starting out or whatever. Um, but, yeah, the Apollo is, yeah, would definitely recommend. <laughs> yeah. Do you have recording courses at, at uni? Or Yeah, so we did have that option, actually, um, which now looking back, I, I wish I would have done. Um, but at the time, I was sort of not really thinking I would go down that route. Like, mm -hmm. in college, I, it was just, like, I just want to gig. Yeah. And that's it. Like, nothing else. Like, I'm just going to gig. Um, so yeah, on, in hindsight, I kind of wish I would, but I do have a lot of friends that are very good with recording. So there's people, you know, there's always people to ask and like help as well, which is another great thing about like the whole community, like online and in person as well. Yeah. Like everybody has their own like skills. Yeah. So it's very easy to, and useful to like, you know, ask anybody like trade ideas, like setups, whatever. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, for, uh, for example, one reason why I got this mic. I had another one, which is a small diaphragm condenser, which was great. I mean, it's, it's a fine mic, but mm -hmm. I talked to a bass player uh, from the U.S. Um, for a band, Bad Wolves. They're kind of like a rock metal band. Mm -hmm. And he had this mic, and his voice sounded like so good. And he was like, yeah. yeah, I got this because we, with the band, we're doing Patreon for our fans, and I had to get a mic. And I was like blown away by the quality, and I was like, Dude, I need, I need that for my setup, man. <laughs> what is it? As a sure, you know, a sure SM7B. Ah, okay, yeah. I definitely need a mic like this on here. Is is my yeah. mic? <laughs> so yeah. I definitely need to grab one. <laughs> but I mean, if if you're not doing a lot of voice stuff wow. or something, you don't, you don't really need it. Yeah, but, exactly. I like never thought to get one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me neither. I mean, why would I need a mic? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I don't mic up my cabinet either. I just take a DI and that's just yeah. It. It's mm -hmm. so easy to record bass, actually. Um, yeah, 100%. I mean, compa co compared to other instruments, like uh, drums, for example, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm going to do a podcast. And, oh, I need a mic. Oh, I need to hook up my camera. I need to get a mic stand. I need to, you know, it's like yeah, th things yeah. pile up. <laughs> what, what is keeping you inspired lately, music-wise? What are you doing to, to stay inspired? Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. I would say when this because obviously I've got all this downtime now when this started um I've been so I've been like looking at who inspires me like the most like bass playing wise um and I've been so for instance like Pino like as always like he's been like a massive inspiration for a few years like pretty much since I started like the first few years I like discovered him um, not right away, but like the beginning of uni, I got into more like bass playery bass players and like really like did loads of research on all of these guys. So for instance, like Pino, I've um 
like googled like everything is like his whole discography like everything he's ever played on like everything yeah. and just <laughs> written it all down found it on spotify and then stuck it in a massive playlist because he's played on so much it took me weeks to maybe not yeah. weeks but hours <laughs> days to put together um so i've done that for a few other guys so i've done that for pino um sheree reed as well yeah is awesome i've done it with him and i think a few more as well um carol k yeah, so i just wrote down like all the guys that are like the ultimate bass players to me like who like inspires me the most so done that made playlists for all of them and I've just been going through like song by song like just transcribing like everything like trying to get the tone how they've got it like really getting into like the lines and stuff um James Jameson as well um so yeah that's what I've been doing recently to stay inspired like really like getting into like all of their lines and stuff um it's interesting with Pino because every album is so different yeah like sometimes it's like you don't even you wouldn't even clock that it's him so like Adele albums but there'll be like one fill that like you hear and you're like oh right yeah that's um that's yeah. probably him yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's been really interesting like really like deep delving into like their yeah the lines that they come up with then you see like the repetition of their ideas and stuff and how it's like progressed yeah it's really interesting yeah and i mean that is pretty bass playing focused have you been listening to anything else that's more like like not bass player music so to speak not not to put yeah. those guys down or anything but yeah no i mean i listen to like so much like all sorts so when i'm not practicing i'll listen to everything so like top 40 um i used to be like really into metal so I'll listen to that often as well um yeah so for the most part when I'm like so like at the gym or like doing whatever like listen to music I'll just put on anything and like listen to it as a whole yeah um yeah which you also get ideas from like you'll hear like a vocal line or like a guitar line or whatever and like you know nick that for something <laughs> but yeah no i listen to yeah everything <laughs> yeah that's actually how i uh actually recognized the becky hill songs because they they're being played at my gym and i was like okay <laughs> i know that from from training so yeah yeah they're very like yeah they really like pump you up yeah, yeah. they're great for the gym <laughs> yeah and uh, you mentioned like pino Sheree reed and carol k and jameson that got you um well, you were, you know, now that you've studied and went to uni, what uh, were you listening to? Or what were, were your inspirations while you were, like, learning bass yeah. in the first years? Mm -hmm. I mean, so when I first started, I didn't know any bass players, really. Like, mm -hmm. I knew, like, John Paul Jones, because my dad loves Led Zeppelin. Yeah. So I was, he would tell me, like, all about them. So I knew, like, a few um but yeah, so I started and started doing like the grades. So I was learning those pieces. And then when I was learning that, I realized that I actually I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Like, I'm going to really like take note of, of this and like really um, get into it. So around this point, um, my guitar teacher also um, put me in touch with a function band and like a few more of his students that were also like taking lessons so we could like get together and like jam and stuff like that um, I was also looking around like local music shops and like looking for bands going there um, so the first sort of like massive inspiration was um, like Iron Maiden like Steve Harris that was like the first band that um I like really got into so Steve Harris was like the first massive inspiration um because the students that my teacher put me in touch with were like into Maiden yeah so we'd learn like Maiden songs but all by ear because like none of us at this point in time could like read because yeah. we'd been playing for like a couple of months maybe so we'd learn like we'd learn it at home and then like get together on like a Saturday and like play them in, yeah. in, one, in someone's bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> so we did like Maiden, um, like, like Pantera stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah I love Iron Maiden too. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Like, he, yeah. So Steve Harris is 
yeah, definitely a massive one. And like to start off learning his stuff really helps progress you as well. Mm -hmm. Like learning his stuff by ear is great. So yeah, we um, got together and played those. So it was metal for a long time, like a good few years, right up until uni. Um, And then uni is a point where I like discovered like more like Jacko I discovered in uni and like James Jameson and stuff. So that's when it became more like rounded um, yeah. But yeah, at the beginning, it was yeah, Steve Harris. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's one thing I've noticed. Like I'll, I'll, from my from myself and or students um, or who are like you know study with me, mm-hmm. a lot of people, especially guitar and bass, uh, you know, they start listening to metal or rock music, and then they when they go to, to study, they discover these other genres and yeah, yeah they <laughs> yeah. broaden their horizons. But you know, I grew up listening to Iron Maiden, Deep Purple, Black mm-hmm. Sabbath, and that kind of thing. And yeah. also discovered Jamerson and, you know, soul music when mm. I got started to study because my, my teacher was yeah. like, okay, you need to learn some bass lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that is. I feel like metal maybe just grabs you initially. Yeah, um, yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Like, and his lines as well are like not, like they are complex, but not on the level, obviously, of like Jameson where it's like changing like every two seconds. Yeah. Whereas Steve Harris is like a riff, which is sick, that like repeats a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still, and a lot of them are tricky. Like for my um, college entrance piece, I played, you know, Phantom of the Opera by yeah. Maiden. That yeah, of course. Massive, like, yeah. Um, so played that, which was tricky to get down like perfectly. Yeah. Like there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're yeah a great band. Yeah, yeah. I've seen live once in um, when was it, 2018, I think. Wow. In Hanover, uh, it was an amazing show. I was in the yeah, third, I bet. Thir- third row, and that was the first uh, wow. time I've seen them. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was like for me as a child, you know, growing up in South America, and they don't play that there that often. It was like yeah. you know, a dream come true just to see them perform live. And I also got the pick of uh, Dave Murray. Um, oh my which, god, that's yeah, so cool! <laughs> I jumped. At the, I you know, I fought for that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so sick. Show. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, have you seen any um, like I would call like what, your heroes or your favorite bands live that has been a life changing moment or like one moment where you said like, wow, that was that was a great show. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this. I remember seeing um, like Elton John when I was like six. I like really vividly remember that, and that's kind of stayed with me for like a long time. So I think possibly like the idea of of music was always sort of like at the back of my mind. Like I really like enjoyed that gig, and I remember that like so vividly. Um, but my dad took me to see Robert Plant um because he came to like our local city so my dad took me to see him um and there were a lot of bands so I'm from like a small town um and we have like a town hall and there were a lot of bands that came to play there like ones that my dad remembered um from like the 60s and 70s so there's a band called Wishbone Ash um who were like quite like low-key they're not like super well known but my dad remembers them so well so we went to see them, but because it was such a small venue, they like came out afterwards and like chatted to everybody. And um, that was, yeah, I've been to so many that have been amazing. But a recent one, um, which is maybe not so expected, but um, I went to see Ariana Grande like before mm-hmm. everything happened. Yeah. I, I love Ariana Grande, but it's not like a bassist, like sort of, you know, gig to want to go to, but yeah I just think she's amazing so I went to see that but her bass player is awesome like his playing is amazing and he always puts in these like awesome fills like yeah. her musicians are just like vibing the whole way through like it's insane so that show was that was like maybe it was like nine months ago from now not that long ago but I saw yeah. them and was like oh my god <laughs> yeah like it'd be so sick to like be in the stadium like playing what they're playing it was yeah it was so good so yeah there's yeah. been so many gigs yeah, yeah. I, one, one artist that i would like to see live and that is also not like what you would call bass player centric even though her bass lines are pretty sick uh, is jua lipa yeah her bass she, lines are yeah 
insane so yeah. good there's definitely like a 70s vibe yeah. at the minute with pop stuff which is great but yes 100 percent. yeah that's what like the album she put out this year that's one for me in my opinion one of the best sounding and you know best composed pop albums of the last couple of years because i was like totally I heard, heard uh, a couple of the songs and for the very first minute i was like that's amazing man yeah <laughs> i can just listen to this all day yeah no it's it's so good yeah 100 percent. it's brilliant yeah. it's like perfect amount like yeah. yeah no it's great and it's also like um i mean most of them i, I, I guess are synth bass lines mm. or or electric bass made to sound pretty close to a synth but yeah. the, the the grooves they're just locked in per perfectly with the, with everything and it's not too much or too little it's just like you know <laughs> yeah no definitely absolutely and it's so good that there's this like yeah 70s vibe happening yeah with like amazing bass lines <laughs> yeah for sure uh, i've done this with oh, no wait before i ask that um you mentioned uh learning by ear mm -hmm. uh was that something that your teacher told you to do or was it just you just wanted to learn songs yeah I mean it was kind of a mixture really so at the beginning yeah it was more like I'd like listen to a song and then like hear it um yeah at the beginning I didn't for the first like six months to a year of me playing I didn't learn like any theory so I didn't learn like what the notes were like on the neck at all like I just listened to the tune like found the note and then like just found it that way like visually yeah. or like I'd watch like my guitar teacher so I was in like um a stoner rock band um quite early on okay. <laughs> and um we played shows but um I would like play exactly what the guitarist was playing yeah. it was just at like local pubs but we just like play the same thing so he'd like come up with these riffs and I'd like or the two guitarists would and I would like watch what they were playing and then just copy it yeah so it was like a visual thing for like at the beginning yeah um so then just like use my ears more and like they got better and better um but yeah my teacher was kind of against reading um for some yeah for some reason he was like um it's it's best to like use your ears always like and not because if you are reading you like you know staring um at the page and you won't be like involved um but I did later on go on to like learn how which mm -hmm. I'm glad about because I do think it's a good idea to have both yeah. but I prefer to use my ears personally um yeah definitely. and it's easier for me yeah yeah that's one thing that I, at the beginning when I was starting, for example, um, because my, my cousin was playing guitar already and I wanted to play with him and he was like, yeah, I'm playing this tune and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, I, I looked up tabs, your tablature. Yeah. And I relied on that for a couple of couple of years. And I heavily regret that because, <laughs> because I, that, those were used where I could have used to train my ears. You know? Yeah. And, I mean, yeah now, but when you're a kid like you you don't know like you yeah. do stuff like <laughs> and I'm sure it's like it also shows you how important ears are like realizing like oh I wish I would have done it this way like yeah 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 that's for sure but I also think um you know if, I mean the situation where I, I step to a gig and somebody hands me a sheet of written music like you know mm -hmm. musical notation is like yeah yeah one percent maybe <laughs> yeah that, I, yeah that's the thing yeah i might get a lead sheet with a couple of chord symbols maybe yeah mm -hmm. but most of the time it's just a recording and that's it and i have to yeah learn. no for sure like the most i used music was um like towards the end of school like sort of like college like sixth form so like right before uni in like the school orchestras like they gave us like notation yeah. but that was kind of yeah i've not yeah i rarely use it never on gigs yeah like never yeah but th there have been for me in my case a couple mm -hmm. of situations where i have been glad that i could read um yeah for example um i think a month ago and i'm gonna do it again next week um a classical orchestra asked me to record electric bass for them and they handed me music so i had to be able to read it right yeah and they also wanted to film the video of me playing and if i didn't know how to play music or read music that would have been a missed gig 
right yeah that's the thing yeah it's just it's so important to like do as much as you can yeah yeah yeah, cover everything (laughs) yeah um what are your uh top five most influential albums (laughs) this might take a while (laughs) you you can can do three if it's uh, too much okay let me think let me think I'd say the first Maiden album, definitely. There's going to be some weird ones in here that are kind of <laughs> random, but the Doesn't first matter. Maiden, <laughs> the first Maiden album for sure. Um, they were like a massive influence on me, um, and then I'd say second would be um, "In Through the Outdoor" by Led Zeppelin. Okay, is like not not one of like the most well known, um, but yeah my dad used to play that one the most like I've heard that my whole life like yeah. the whole thing every Saturday being like blasted out <laughs> all day <laughs> so definitely that one um yeah that's a great album um uh, there's a band called Tudor Cinema Club Not um, familiar. yeah Tudor so Cinema. they have an album called Tourist History uh-huh. um so I heard that album and that was one of the albums where I think I decided that I really wanted to like pursue music. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so fun. Like it's a great album and the bass players, like bass lines are really interesting actually. Like, there's a tune called what you know, and the bass line is just very like, yeah, interesting. Um, Go check it out. Yeah. No, it's so much fun to play. Um, hmm, two more. I would say also, these probably aren't, like, because there's so many. I'm just trying to, like, get the ones that come to me. Um, Esperanza Spalding Mm -hmm. um, has an album called, I want to say it's called Good Lava, but it's it's one she brought out a few weeks ago. Okay. But it's such a good, like, fusion album. um, Oh, okay. That inspired me so much. Like, the lines are incredible. Like, the vocals are amazing. And all the musicians on it as well are just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I would probably... And then I guess one, which is probably the main one, is Voodoo. Yeah, um, I, I figured you would say that. <laughs> yeah, I was trying... Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to get, like, a range of, like, all the possible... I didn't want to go with just one genre, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what to say about that yeah. one. Like... <laughs> Yeah, a lot of years was spent listening to the album, yeah. but there's that, that so one, many, like there's hundreds. Yeah, I'm sure. That one has been mentioned by a couple of people. Yeah, it's so good. Like, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really yeah, great. It's, it, I think that's one of the, you know, groundbreaking albums that was like, you know, changed the way people look at the bass. Totally. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. Yeah. One thing, that, uh, one artist I've been listening to recently, um, that I did listen to like a few years back is uh, Michelle de Gocello. Oh, I've not heard of that. Is it a he or a, a, a band? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, is that? The album Plantation Lullabies. Do you yeah. Know that? No. Do ch- definitely check it out. Oh, amazing. What was that? Um, well, we're going to send you a link. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'd love to check that out. Yeah. It's a. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> you got to check it out. Okay. But, oh, amazing. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, th- that one, uh, Plantation Lullabies and Peace Beyond Passion, That th- those are two amazing albums. Oh, brilliant. Um, I'm going to send you an email. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking I'm forward to checking it out. I'm very excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, when it comes to albums, there's so many. Like, it's so hard to, like, get, like, even five that you can say are, like, yeah the most influential it's very difficult yeah that's a tough question but it's, i think it's interesting uh, for people to know what you know c- kind yeah. of like influence you and what uh, kind of made you the musician that you are now you know yeah for sure mm-hmm. uh, where can people find you online yeah so um everything is liv thompson bass i'm pretty sure mm-hmm. um so that's on like youtube um instagram and everything is linked on Instagram as well. So it's all linked like, on my page. But I'd say like Instagram, I'm like the most active on. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, we've been a bit over an hour. So let's wrap it up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that went super fast. Yeah, it's, it happens <laughs> fast. 
I um, filmed like an extra video because I know that the Zoom video isn't always the best. It's kind of gloomy in here, but I filmed okay. a second video. So I'll send oh, you that you. if yeah. that's useful. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, I'm going to stop recording here on the, on the on Zoom, just cool. FYI. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to follow Olivia on Instagram at livethompsonbase and also check out her website, which is oliviathompsonbases.com. Thank you guys for watching and listening and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.